Hey friends, so let's start off with the good news. Your girl is down another 10 pounds, total of 10 pounds down since we last spoke four weeks ago, and that is a total of 31 pounds, okay? So I am officially in the 240s, just made it in there, but I'm there. The food noise is still gone. I don't have any cravings. I haven't had any binges, no side effects. Plus, I've been intermittent fasting here and there, not as much as I did when we first spoke. And then I also have moved my body every day for at least 25 minutes a day for the Dita S100 challenge. A lot of days I did more than 25 minutes, but for the days that I didn't even wanna do anything, I at least did my 25 minutes. Not every day was like an intense workout. Some days it's just walking. But the whole point of the challenge is to just move my body every day and stay active. If you're new to the family and you haven't already, be sure to check out my latest video, Shredding 20 Pounds. The link is in the description and that will give you a little background story on how I lost the 20 pounds and how life was before those 20 pounds. Honestly, I just want to thank everyone who already watched the video, who commented, who supported me. I've been struggling to lose this weight for a long time and I haven't been this consistent in years and it feels good and just having that extra support it means a lot more than you guys know so just follow me on my journey to getting fit before 40 be sure to click that subscribe button comment below share your tips ask me questions let's hold each other accountable talk a little bit about May and talk about what my plans are for June I was really proud of myself in May because this month was my son's birthday he turned 13. I'm officially a teenager mom. I have a teenager, guys. I have a teenager. <laughs> we went to Orlando for a few days and I was still on point. Like, you know, I woke up every single day while we were there and went to work out for at least 25 minutes, sometimes more days. You know, I had drinks, but nothing like before. Like, honestly, I don't even have the cravings or the desire to eat or drink the same way that I used to. So I know in the beginning of the video, I said, let's talk about the good news. So that means that there's some bad news. So the bad news, I don't know if you're going to call it bad news, but I'm a social person. I like to go out to eat. I like to have drinks. And for weight loss purposes, it's great. You know, I'm full quicker, X, Y, and Z. But like now it's like I'm going out to a restaurant. Like I'll just have a water. Like I don't even want to drink. But I want to want to want the drink. Like I don't want it. Like I'm not even like sad. Like I can't have it. But still in my head, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, I don't have this desire, but in my head, I'm like, girl, you don't want to drink? It's Memorial Day weekend. You on vacation. X, Y, and Z. It's like, mm, I have a water. It's no biggie. <laughs> and if you know me, <laughs> you know that's, that's just different. So mentally, I just have to be okay with the fact that I just don't want it. But I want to want it, okay? I don't know. Like, I love going to brunch on a Sunday. Like, so it's not really bad news. It's just, it's something that I don't think, I've never heard people talk about. Like we talk about how we can't eat as much, how we're full, you know, you're happy, you're losing weight. But the reality is that depending on what your lifestyle is, it's a big change. If a lot of your activities were based on food and having drinks and having a good time and you just don't desire those things, now you got to figure out a different way. I mean, I still went to brunch. I had less drinks. I still had a good time, but it's still a real issue. Not like... And not necessarily a bad issue, but it's something to think about, okay? It is. Because you can't just turn off the medication side effects. Like, you know, you can, it doesn't, You don't get to just say, hey, today I'm just going to have a cheat day and go crazy. Because your ass is full, <laughs> okay? So you can taste something else. But for me, it's like, I can't, I can't just indulge like, as like I want to. So remember, this feeling is all the time. It's not you go on a vacation all-inclusive. You still can't eat can't drink as much, you know? So those are the things that I have to come with like an understanding and just be okay with it. So it, I know it might sound dumb, but just letting y'all know my thoughts in these past few weeks, okay? All right, I had to take my notes out because I wanted to go over my weekly weigh-ins. I know the number one question I get sometimes like, how much did you lose week to week? Or they wanna know like how much, how much time it took me to get to the 30 pounds. So I document everything for y'all so I can come back and answer any of the questions y'all ask me. So let's get into that, okay? So the last time we spoke, I was excited because we was getting into the 250s, you know? Now with this video, I'm excited because we get into the 240s, okay? And it's crazy to think like in March, I had stick, I have stickies on my wall. I think I showed you guys that. If not, I'll clip it in here. 
And I, I had like from 280 to 250 on the wall. And it's time to make more stickies, okay? And it's like, I don't want to put 100 stickies on there because 100 pounds can seem like a lot. So I was just breaking it up. And it's like, oh my God, it's time to put more stickies. So I only remove the post-its. I call them stickies. I only remove the post-its the first of the month. Wait, I'm going to weigh in on Friday morning, which is the 31st. And that's going to be my weigh-in for June 1st because I have to bring Isaiah June 1st to Georgia. So I'm not going to be weighing in that Saturday. But I will weigh in on Friday the 31st and we'll see what my official weigh-in is so we can see how much I lost in just the month of May. But as of right now, I have stickies from 256 to 250 on my wall and I can take all those down. So as long as I stay where I am right now for the next day or two, <laughs> y'all about to watch me make some more stickies. I'll make more stickies later so you can see it. <laughs> I'm really excited about that, I know. But um. Let's get into these weekly weigh-ins. Week six, I lost one pound. Week seven, I lost three pounds. Week eight, I lost 2.2 pounds. Week nine, I lost 3.3 pounds. And week 10, I lost 1.5 pounds. So from the last time we spoke, I was 259.4 pounds. And then on my last weigh-in on May 24th, I was 249.4 pounds. So that officially puts me into the 240s. We just right there, but we there, okay? So now that we are in the 240s, the goal is to say hello to the 230s. I don't really put any a time frame. I'm okay with slow progress. If I lose one to three pounds a week, I consider that success, okay? For the last few weeks, I've been rotating between my stomach and my arm. I haven't done any thigh injections for a few weeks. And that's just because I kept track of all 10 weeks, like where I was doing the injections. And I did see that the weeks that I did my injection on my arm or my thigh, I lost more weight. So I decided, you know what, for the next few weeks, let's just stick to that and see how that works. And it doesn't mean that I'll never inject in my thigh again. It's just what I'm doing right now. I'll be doing another injection day tomorrow. And I already got my medication for month four. What I love about Effecti is that they send an email, like once it's almost time for your next month, they'll send an email and a text like, hey, it's time to put in your prescription or whatever. So I already have a new month of medication at my house before I even run out of my current medication. So I got my medication already and I chose to stay with 7.5. Um, my dosage right now is 7.5 and I've been on 7.5 for two months. So I don't wanna increase the dosage un unless I have to. And because the food noise is still pretty much gone, the cravings are basically non-existent and I'm still losing weight gradually, I'm gonna stay on my same dosage next month as well. So my first month on terzepatide, I was on five milligram. Second month, I went on 7.5. Third month, 7.5. And then my fourth month is gonna come up in like a week or two and that's still 7.5 so so far we're so good now let's talk about food i get that question a lot too what do i eat i hear that question all the time so i wanted to just talk about that you know i like to meal prep i think having my meals ready and knowing what i'm going to eat just makes things easier especially because i don't have a craving for anything necessarily so it's just it's just less thought now i was doing a, i was a little bit I was doing better my first few weeks with the meal prepping, like between ordering cheddars or meal prepping myself, the fridge was stocked with things. But now I kind of been eating like on the fly, but I'm still making good decisions. I'm focusing on protein. I really want to get deeper into paying attention to my protein intake in June, like and actually measuring it and seeing like how many grams are you really getting? Okay? Because I'm not doing that. I'm just saying, hey, I'm eating protein, but I still don't think I'm eating enough protein. But mainly, I've just been eating like chicken with some broccoli. I've had, I made some sliders yesterday. It was like a ground beef sliders and it was good. The slider bread is probably not the most healthiest, but I, ha I don't have that much carbs and I'm not running away from carbs. I'm gonna eat things that taste good that I enjoy, but I'm gonna make them healthier and make them at home and make it make sense. So with the sliders, like in the past, if I was making burgers, I would, 
make a potato like french fries or something with it and i realized yesterday like yo you literally just made the sliders and that was dinner and you were good and it was really good really quick to make i met my friend earlier for lunch today and we went to the restaurant ordered a blackened salmon um caesar salad like the lunch special meal um, just little things like that i did order one drink at first i was like nah i'm not gonna get anything but then i ended up ordering one um i did drink that and then for dinner I had some white rice with some chili. It was half a cup of white rice and then a cup of chili. So even that, and that was really fooling, okay, because of the rice, but I measured it. My go-to meal, honestly, is though, is like Chick-fil-A. I've never went to Chick-fil-A as much as I go there now. I don't really have like much takeout anymore as much as I did in the past, because I used to get takeout food like multiple times in a week. But now I don't really do that, but I will go to Chick-fil-A I'll get like the chicken nuggets, toss it in buffalo sauce and put it on their kale salad. It's kind of my healthy way to get fast food, like, but not get something else. So like, if I know I didn't cook and I know I'm not gonna cook, I'm like, yo, just go Chick-fil-A, get some nuggets and eat the kale salad. So I've been eating a lot of that. <laughs> and then when I go to Cheddar's, I get the salmon, broccoli, seasoned rice. And my friend also meal prepped for me one week. She made me a few meals. She made some lentil pasta and she made something else, something um, like a cauliflower mash. And that was pretty good too. So I know it's kind of hard because I'm just rambling random things that I ate in the week, but I will try to do better on the next week. I am not a cook. You know, I cook more now at home because I am on this journey, but I'm not that cook. I'm honestly just learning. I, I was cooking more before, like, you know, we gotta eat. You know? So for right now, um, those are some of the random things I eat. Oh. Let me not forget, someone told me about this Fit Crunch Bars. Those are excellent. Does not have any aftertaste and it's a protein bar. That's really good too. And another question I've been getting is like, what are you doing for workouts? Um, I do not have a gym membership. I work out at home. I do have a Peloton um, bike and tread. But honestly, I wasn't even paying for the Peloton membership until a few days ago. I told myself that I had to hit 50 days of moving my body for at least 25 minutes a day before I would actually pay pay to put the prescription back on because I didn't want to be paying for something I was not using. Um, but since I made it to day 50, I am now, I turned on my subscription and I've been walking like for 30, 45 minutes, an hour in the morning this last week. And that's a big deal to me because I don't like mentally, I'd be like, oh, let me take a 10 minute class. Let me take a 15 minute class and they can add it to a, an hour, but I haven't been on the treadmill and just committed to 45 minutes or an hour in a while. But this week, I literally been waking up every day and working out. I feel like that's coming from when I was in Orlando for those days, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the first thing I did was work out. So I told myself, even when I got home, like just keep that up, keep that up, keep doing that. So I just been doing that and I think it's a great way to start my day. And I'm just, I'm just happy. I'm happy to be in a place where it's like, don't get me wrong, this medication is not a miracle drug, okay? It is very helpful. It's a tool that I needed in life, but you have to know that you need to put work into. Like I'm having a success with the GLP-1 and I know I heard people say they didn't do anything and they lost the weight. But again, that's not my story. You know, I'm taking the medication, it's giving me more energy, it's making me full faster, it helps me not think about food the way that I used to think about it. And because of all that, it's making it easier for me to go out there and be consistent with intermittent fasting and eating certain foods and drinking less and eating less and moving more. So yes, the, the medication, I am five star. Like, I just wish I knew about it again. But at the end of the day, it's still our job to work on our mindset, work on how much we're, we're being, we're moving and getting the right food in, how much water we're drinking. Like we still have those responsibilities. Don't put everything, all your coins just into, oh, I'm just going to take a shot and everything's going to change. Losing weight is hard. And no matter what tool you have, it's hard. And don't let nobody tell you anything different. It's not impossible. It's just hard. And it's going to take setting routines and building habits. It's not just going to happen. You know, and every single day I'm working on building my habits and 
I honestly want to spend more time creating content about those type of things. Like not just, oh, what I did this week to lose weight or what I ate, but really showing like when someone says change your mindset, okay, but how do I do that? Oh, you like what steps are you taking to change your mindset? I'm really learning that just because things were always a certain way, it doesn't have to stay that way. The same way I said, oh, I don't really cook. I could be a chef in a year. Like people learn things quickly. I've never done my hair before. And last week I put crochet hair in my head. Now it might not look the best and I might've um, fried my hair with a fly iron cause I had it too high. But just the fact that I tried and the hair is staying in my head and like I can see like, okay, I know where I went wrong. I know what I can do. I, I'm a girl who didn't even like to wash her own hair. Like, and now my cousin was like, you did that? I was like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> okay. So no matter how old we are, no matter how long things have been going a certain way, it's never too late to start to build different habits and to change our identity. Like if you want to be that girl that does hair, be that girl. If you want to be that girl that lost 100 pounds, be that girl. If you want to be that girl that wakes up every morning at 5 a.m., be that girl. It, you don't have to, like, it's not going to happen overnight, but you need to take the steps to see what can I do to start making these things possible. So, I know a lot of people in the GLP-1 community, and I know a lot of people that might have started around the same time I did or started after and just wondering, like, oh, it doesn't work for me or you know, things like that. And I'm like, listen, the number one thing you could do is focus on everything else that you can control. We can't control how many pounds we're gonna lose a week based on taking the medication. But we can control is how much water we're gonna drink. What are we, exactly are we eating? What are we listening to? Like, as in like TV, podcasts, what are you doing first thing in the morning? What is your nighttime routine, daytime routine? And even if you're like a person like me, who don't really have a nighttime routine, who don't really have a daytime routine, who kind of wakes up and on her phone first thing in the morning, okay? And late at night till she falls asleep, even though she knows she shouldn't. That's where I am. And I'm not gonna change these things overnight. I watch all these videos, 5 a.m. routine and da 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 and I know some of the things that I should do versus some of the things that I am doing, but it's not going to happen overnight. Changing your mindset takes time. Changing your mindset takes energy. It takes effort. It's not just going to change. So whether you're trying to lose weight or get a new job or finish a project, whatever it might be, you have to be there mentally in order for it to happen. And that's how it is for me. I'm not no you know, therapist or any professional here, but I'm just, I'm a girl who lost 100 pounds, gained it all back and is losing it again. And I've seen firsthand the power of the mind. I've seen firsthand of what can be done when you take the limitations off of you. And you realize like, it doesn't matter. It's not too late. I can learn this. I can do that. Be, be kind to yourself. Okay, so I'm going on a rant. But my point is the journey ain't easy, but it's worth it. And it took me years of struggling. I mean like five years of struggling to finally get to this point of where I am consistently losing weight, doing the things that I said I would do. I can't remember the last time I made it to day 59 of D to S100. I started this challenge several times with other people and then just quit. So this is a big deal to me because I struggled for it for so long, but I'm so happy that I have been documenting the whole time because I feel like sometimes in this, especially in the world that we live in, we see success so quickly within a 30 second reel or an hour vlog and we don't get to see all the struggle and all of that. So anybody that has been here, you know, for time has seen like, y'all see me struggling. I never went anywhere. I've been on Instagram struggling, trying to lose this weight since I gained it back. And I think <laughs> we just, to see it say, hey, look, she didn't give up. She kept going. That's why I share my story. Because if just one person says, you know what? Because of you, I tried again. I get messages, you know, sometimes on my other page just saying, oh, because of you, I started my journey. I started walking or I spoke to my doctor. I got the medication or I joined the with the link you posted. You know, 10 pounds down, like 
that's why I document because I love to hear that like you watching my story felt like okay I'm gonna try that too and now you're having a success so I share my story not just for my accountability but hoping to just inspire one person to say listen it doesn't matter how many times you fail try again because trying again it means eventually you'll get there versus just quitting all right but if thank you for watching my video I know I've been rambling but I just want to give you all that update your girl is in the 240s okay yeah I'm gonna come back here talking about y'all I'm in the 230s okay we're gonna speak that into existence and then once I hit the 230s the goal is gonna be Wonderland oh listen when I hit Wonderland I can't wait and it's not just about the number it's just seeing that today yo you've been putting in work and it's showing it's showing you see it you're ready <laughs> um, be sure to subscribe like this video comment below let me know if you have anything fun planned for the summer. Um, my June plans right now, I do have a little, I have a few events and plans in June, but my goals for June is to actually track my water intake. I can never remember how much water I actually drink and I want to track, I'm gonna fix that. I am going to track every day how much water I actually get whether I'm getting the 40, the 80, the 120, I really want to see like, cause I keep saying, oh, I need to drink enough water, but I'm not actually remembering. Like, I know I had this, it's kind of full. I think I finished one already, but I can't remember right now. So I need to get myself back to tracking. I'm not tracking my food, I but I do want to track how much water I drink. I do weigh my food because I want to see how many grams of protein and how many calories, what's the portion control, but I'm not like logging in my meals. I said that was one of my goals, but it's not even gonna be one of my goals. I'm okay with how I'm eating right now. I'm good with that. But the water, we need to track. All right, be sure to subscribe, like this video, and comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about my 30 pound weight loss journey. I'm an open book. Bye.